Age of Empires 2 is about empire building, combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization into a mighty empire. But there are difficulties too. Cunning enemies and rivals that oppose you, powerful castles to destroy, tyrants to bring down. And if you're skillful and a little lucky, you just might build a wonder of the world and create an empire that will stand the test of time. To learn how empires are built, help our first hero, William Wallace, in his fight against his oppressors. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. Well, we must act soon. If we have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good! Now, right click near the blue flag. Good! Now, move to the next flag. Click the soldier, then right click near the flag. Excellent! To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go on to the next flag where you'll meet some allied soldiers. To move all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then right click to move. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack. The outpost is destroyed. Slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Home sweet home. Wait. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village. No time. Just click your soldiers and right click the English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we will need many more recruits. Much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. An army marches on its stomach. 
or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a village. Then right-click the forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Good! You found some gold. any gold yet. Search in the unexplored territory. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle! But it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center, then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for a villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom. Good job! The villager has appeared next to your town center. Now, create another village. Good job. Try building another house. 
You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click a villager. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. Click the buildings button, click the build house button, then click where you want to build the house. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. A barracks is a military. different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen that's one militia create three more and you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario click the barracks and quickly click the create militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. English attacks. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But face it, Long Shan's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now, our smiths are forging swords, and Fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. The English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raid. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button.
researching technology costs resources, but improves your civilization. While you're researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. In addition to gathering food in forage bushes, villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer. to a new age. To advance from the dark age to the feudal age, you need 500 food. to the feudal age. However, we also need two buildings from your current age. Good! You're on your way to the feudal age. You already have a barracks, so now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food, so build it next to your food source. Go arms! The English are making a sneak attack! Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. you can advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. Click your town center, then click the Advance to Feudal Age button. Good! You're on your way to the Feudal Age. Go arms! The English are making a sneak attack! Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. Near the minimap at the lower right corner of the screen is the Idle Villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click Upgrade to men at arms. Cool. Upgrading to man at arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. The English are attacking again! Teach them a lesson with your new men at arms. Erlove, tall, four pairs. English are no match for your warriors. Long 
Shanks has invaded, stormed, and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse. He's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised across the river forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. The time has come to take the offensive. But the English have a fort near the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. You found some sheep? Sheep are a good source of food, so send them back to your town center and assign a villager to gather food from them. You can specify a location for new units to gather by selecting a gather point. For villagers, click the town center and click the set gather point button. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food and wood. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see at great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. Keep making villagers at your town center until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. Use your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. Outpost. You know what to do. Knock it down. To fish, click a fishing ship and right click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. the barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map.
villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are complete. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. Once you've gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town center. If you're low on food, build some additional farms. You can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click the town bell. Good! You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town center, ring the town bell again to send them back to work.
once you've reached a few feet, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least one. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers to what you can afford them. You need to play a random map game, the most common type of game in Age of Empires. Sterling was our first great victory. 
even as we held the coastline. Word came in that the Stirling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshank's name's Wallace a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling, so we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct the market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. Situation starting to look up. Did you know that there are three different modes for the minimap in the lower right corner of the screen? Hmm? You can show only military units or only resources and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the minimap. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic, and the English have captured her. Good! You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers and those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your army. Perfect! You now have one relic garrison. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. You've reached your allies' town. Go inside and see how his city's doing. Your allies' gate will open automatically for you. Welcome. If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. Farms are a good source of food once you've exhausted forage bushes and animals. Farms are built by buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right-click a farm. Ja. 
The English are attacking our town. Can you attribute any spare food or gold to us? Thanks for the resources. If you have any spare soldiers, come to our town and let's drive the English out. You now have two relics, Garrison. Bring back one more and you'll be victorious. Kid, to tribute your ally, click the diplomacy button in the upper right corner of your screen. Give your allies some food and gold, but don't give him everything you own. Create trade cards to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market, but for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. Villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they're created by using gather. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. You can use the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. We have enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering their relic. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood.
If you click the trade cart on your allies' market, you can make extra gold. Your trade cart will automatically make trips between your and your allies' market.
Fir To To Dan Kat in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of our own with which to meet Longshanks. We march south to Falkirk, where we will rendezvous with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. Only way we can hold the boggy lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself has sworn to join our forces and together we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. The English could attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold at your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection, and archers can even fire out of a tower.
advanced buttons let you set combat states for your soldiers. A defensive soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons on the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advanced buttons, you can also order a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or The advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit such as a monk. Thank <laughs> you. 
Congratulations. You're going to find lots of things to do in the castle age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. Your new siege workshop you can make battering rounds. Rounds are slow, but they're resistant to arrow fire and excellent at knocking down walls. You may need some rams to attack the English castle. You may need to assign extra villagers to gather stones so you'll have enough to build the castle and all the fortifications you'll need. your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more Wode Raiders. Wallace and his bold readers on your side. The English may be in trouble. 
must have a large army with plenty of sea weapons. Destroy the English castle. Trebuchets are massive sea weapons with a great range, available only in the Imperial Age. Remember, the trebuchets must be packed to move and run. Kia, Chart Boonage. is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. It looked certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet, somehow, Though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious! English castle was torn down, and a Scottish one will be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he's but one man, he inspires great deeds in others, and many of the Scottish princes and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forged, of course, in Scotland. May 
has sworn not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue. But we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who will know fear. <laughs>